good morning guys. Um, we are going to be working on Tika Tika today and character traits. So we're putting our two favorite things together. Winham is excited. Um, but we're going to do it through the lens of Spongebob. So I promise I'm going to make it as painless as possible. And then we have a special guest here just to watch over and observe me today. So that is what she'll be doing in the back there for you. So Spongebob Tika Tika. Are we familiar with the characters of Spongebob? Yeah, that's my yeah. That's my Is it? Yeah, what yeah. what kinds of things do you remember about Mr. Krabs as a character? Money. Oliver? Money. Oliver, you want to repeat that louder? Grief. So when I watched through Spongebob, and I watched all these episodes growing up, I rewatched them as I got older, I had to pick a character trait for one of the characters. And I chose Mr. Krabs because he, to me, was the easiest because he literally walked around saying money, money, money. And I chose the word greed as my character trait. So with Stuart Scott, what I did for you guys is I gave you the character trait already to look for. Now what we're doing is we're either reading or watching something and picking the character trait based on what we see. So I watched SpongeBob first, then concluded that he was greedy. So here's the definition of greed. Intense and selfish desire for something, especially wealth, power, or food. Which part holds true to Mr. Krabs based on what you guys know? Wealth, wealth right? An intense and selfish desire for wealth, definitely. So one of the big things about your character trait crossword is you get your definitions, utilize some of the aspects of these when you're stating your claims, because that'll help you make sure greed is an appropriate word when you're making that claim. So now I've watched SpongeBob, I have my character trait, I chose greed, now we're going to go through and do our topic sentence. So this is where we're going to start. Throughout the SpongeBob movie by Steven Hillenburg, Mr. Krabs demonstrates the traits of a greedy individual due to his obsession with money. So one big thing that I want to make, help you guys remember too, when you do your topic sentence, the person reading it doesn't know where you're pulling this from. So you want to make sure you're adding in those details throughout the SpongeBob movie. Now my reader knows where I got this information from by Steven Hillenburg. So when you do a book, you do book title and author. I did a movie, so I did movie and then director. Mr. Krabs, so right away you want to let them know which character you're trying to make a claim about. Demonstrates what word never goes there. Yeah, no proves. We can never prove anything. So I use demonstrates, you can use shows. So I said Mr. Krabs demonstrates the traits of a greedy individual due to his obsession with money. This last part, this obsession with money, I took right from the definition of greed. So I want my reader to know why I think that greed is an appropriate word to use. And then I'm just gonna make sure that I'm making that claim, traits of a greedy individual, and then why I decided he was a greedy individual. Any questions over topic sentence alone? Make sure you do have those details though, because you want the reader to know exactly where you're pulling this from and then who your character is as well. So Mr. Krabs, SpongeBob movie, and then the director. So I have my claim. I know who I'm talking about. I want Mr. Krabs. Now I have to go in and find evidence that supports my claim. So I have an opinion formed, right? But the reader doesn't really care about my opinion on itself. We need to find some evidence that'll back it up. So I watched the SpongeBob movie again to find a quote from Mr. Krabs that shows greed. So within the movie SpongeBob, Mr. Krabs responds to his daughter's birthday wishes by saying, what part of Tika is this part right here? Intro to quote. So what would you add into your intro to quote? What are some details? Do you guys remember when you do your intro to quote, what you're kind of giving that reader an, an inference to? Like what's going on with the story? Do you remember that? So what I did when I did that is I put Mr. Krabs response to his daughter's birthday wishes by saying, so within the story while I'm watching the movie, Pearl had just asked for money. So he's responding to his daughter's birthday wishes. So that's what's going on right when I pulled that quote. And then I pulled the quote, you ain't supposed to spend any of me money. I don't care that it's your birthday. And then citation. So do you guys think that that quote is appropriate for defining greed? Yeah, because it's her birthday, right? And he's refusing to give her money because he wants some money for himself. So if you go back to the definition of greed, I would say that's a selfish desire for his wealth because he'd rather keep it than give it to his daughter for her birthday to make her happy. So that is why I decided to use that quote. So now if you want to get ready to take a picture, 
I put my Tika 1 together. So go ahead and take a picture and I'll go through my analysis as well. say the analysis is kind of the trickier part of the Tika? Have you guys found that to be a little bit harder to put together? Yeah. Okay, sweet. I'm going to walk you through my thought process for the analysis, so I hope that'll help you get kind of like what different things you can pull from. So for my analysis, and I have all three of the parts here, so I color-coded the topic sentence, the intro, the quote, and the quote. So this exemplifies Mr. Crab's selfishness. So selfishness I took again from the definition of greed, so I'm just going to keep coming back to this and keep coming back to my quote. So this exemplifies Mr. Crab's selfishness with his money at the expense of his daughter's happiness on her birthday. So as I was just explaining to you guys, my reason why I thought that was greedy is because he's choosing to selfishly keep his money at the expense of his daughter's happiness on her birthday who wants money. He's gonna be selfish and keep that despite the fact that it's her birthday. Pearl is trying to get money from Mr. Krabs, who's her father, so I want to make sure they knew that it's relative, so it's even more high stake there, on her birthday, and instead he chooses to keep the money for himself. So that comes back to the greed, it comes back to the selfishness, the desire to keep his own money for himself. This shows his greedy intentions and obsession with money, so that was another thing, this intense desire, I put obsession, but that comes back to the definition. His intentions and obsession with his money and desire to have it all for himself. So what I did with my analysis is I continue to go back and forth between using the definition of greed to show the, to show the reader why I thought that was an appropriate word for him. And then I kept going back to my quote as well to contextualize it's the daughter's birthday. He's being greedy because he wants to keep the money for himself despite her happiness. So I used all three pieces to contextualize my analysis. Does that make sense kind of where I picked my information from? Would you agree that this, this is a showing of Mr. Krabs being greedy. So then you just have to go about explaining it to the reader. And the definition is a really good resource because that'll show you why greed is a good word to use. So we've got our Tika one done, so we can put that aside. So now if we want to form a Tika Tika, we have to go back and we have to find another piece of evidence. So the nice part about Tika Tika is what's the second T? Second T? Do you guys remember? So the first T is topic sentence. What's the second T? Transition. Transition, right. So you don't have to remake your claim. So you've already made your claim. You don't have to rewrite that. Your transition is just going to be a transitional phrase. So in addition to, furthermore, similarly, you're just bringing in your next quote. So you already have made your claim. So this is going to be the easier one. Now you just have to pick a second piece of evidence. So I watched the movie again. And I needed to find, I know I'm trying to prove that Mr. Krabs is greedy. So now I'm just directly looking for more evidence of Mr. Krabs being greedy. So furthermore, there's my transitional phrase. Within the movie, the Flying Dutchman offers Mr. Krabs a small amount of money to sell him SpongeBob's soul. Do you guys remember how much money it was? Some of the classes shouted it out, some not. It's actually 62 cents. So I want to use that example because here's what's happening. Mr. Krabs is selling someone else's soul for 62 cents. So I thought that would be a perfect example of greed and also very cheap of him to do so. So, so that's what's going on is the Flying Dutchman offered him a small amount of money, that's 62 cents, to sell him SpongeBob's soul. To this, Mr. Krabs gives up SpongeBob's soul, so he did sell it over. And he replies, you can have the boy's soul, I'll take the money. And then there's my citation. So here was my transitional, so you don't need another topic sentence. We got our intro to quote, our quote, and then our citation. So when you pick out that second piece of evidence, you're gonna have most pieces of Tika done. It's just the analysis part that's gonna be the more tricky part to put in later. Cause that'll be when you have to actually explain yourself. Are there any questions over picking a second piece of evidence? 
and then I'll kind of go about how I connected it to the first one. Any questions over this one? Awesome. Okay, so now I have the same process, but I did my Tika 2 and highlight. So I've got my transitional phrase, my furthermore. So before, that green part would have been the uh, topic sentence. This time it's just a transitional phrase. Then I have my intro to quote, my quote, and then my analysis. So go ahead and take a picture of this, and then I'll go through one more time the analysis process. It's going to be the same process as before. You've chosen your quote. You know where you want to prove that it's greedy. You just have to now take your new quote and the definition of greed and start to work through that thought process. So I put for my analysis, this also indicates, so this one also is indicating greed on top of the other one, that Mr. Krabs is a greedy individual as he gives up the soul of SpongeBob for his own desire for more money. So I brought in that same thing with the definition, the desire for more money at the expense of SpongeBob's soul. So it's the same thought process as Pearl, because he kept his money at the expense of her birthday. This shows he has more regard for his collection of money than for the feelings and thoughts of others, demonstrating the aspects of a greedy character. So I wrapped them both together because in both examples, he showed that his regard for keeping his money and hoarding all of his money was more important to him than the thoughts and feelings of both Pearl and SpongeBob. So both of these are proving greed, greed very similar in just about the same way. Does that make sense how I just wrapped the quote back to the definition and then did that the second time the same way? Awesome. So now you have your two tikas. So now the easy part is step three. All you do is put them both together. So I know tika tika paragraphs look pretty intimidating, but this is just my tika one and my tika two put together but it's gonna be this transitional phrase that keeps them coherent together as one paragraph. So you've already made your claim. This claim goes throughout the whole Tika Tika paragraph. The only difference is you're doing a transitional phrase to bring in a second example and then a second Tika. Does that make sense how the Tika Tika comes together piece by piece? Is it a little less intimidating now that you see piece by piece taken out? All right, go ahead and take a picture of the Tika Tika, and then it's color-coded for the different parts. If you want to annotate anything there. work on doing a Tika Tika today after your quiz I'll introduce the assignment but you're going to be reading a story coming up with your own character trait and then going about the same process of doing your topic sentence intro to quote quote and analysis and then once you get done with your first Tika you'll start working on a Tika Tika but I'll introduce the assignment again after your quiz. Are there any questions over how I put my Tika Tika together using evidence from Spongebob? All right. If you need any extra pictures, I can go back to the slides too. 